This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Hey, welcome back to the show. Welcome to another packed episode of the Monocast. Hey, Leon, how are you today? I'm pretty good. How about you? Just like always, pretty good. Eh? Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, yeah, what we have today is in the main interview, my friend Alex Hammerschmidt, who is ready to launch a first major plugin for Mordic 3, and that is for Shopify. That is one thing we, we and many others have hoped for for quite a while. Yeah. And he has now finally a beta of it, and we'll talk about that about Mordic in e-commerce in general, and about Mordic in general. So, uh, yeah, hold, bre- hold your breath. Um, yeah, other new plugins include something that Leon found out for us. Oh, yeah. Um, I just found out about the new Godot plugin uh, developed by our friend Greg Wright. Uh, it's a plugin which um, provides the ability to back up your files, your logs, and even your database pretty easily and just by a single click. You uh, install the plugin and you can just, uh, in the configuration of the plugin, decide which type of data, files, database, or log you want to back up and you can store it to your like local storage. And um, there's a premium version which allows you to uh, back up those files into Dropbox or your Amazon F3 storage, but the disk comes at a little cost, I think. And overall, the idea is pretty nice because Mautic doesn't really offer handy backup systems, and this feature or this plugin kind of comprehensive that. Yeah, I, I like it because I, I know myself, sometimes I'm lazy, I don't take the time to go to the console and create a backup if I need an extra one. And the daily one is not enough. Yep. Um, so doing that through a single click is, or two clicks or whatever. Pretty like easy. It. Yeah, yeah same. Shout out to, to Greg. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, using Mordic. And uh, I'd like to touch on a topic or a, a bundle of topics that comes up time and again in a ton of flavors. And that is email. And what I'd like to do is... is uh, basically point you to another knowledge base article um, and flip through the major topics basically giving a an overview but but also maybe addressing some of the major misunderstandings so um, why do we need an email I think that's pretty pretty simple we want to send messages messages to people (laughs) Get, get out to them uh, as transactional messages like, like, hey, please confirm your email. Or there's uh, marketing messages like, hey, here's a coupon code. Um, to send those emails is not as easy as it sounds because you want the perfect ratio, success ratio and a good experience and all that. So um, Mordic allows to send emails from Mordic itself um, or through other ways and y- through the configuration you can flip or s- uh, switch between those options um, let Mordic send by itself it's called the PHP mode um, and that means that Mordic itself self does the email lookup and, and delivery and everything and for simple transactional messages that's probably fine in most cases uh, if you on the other hand, need to send more or more com- comprehensive messages, then that's not enough. So one reason is is the quantity. If you need to send higher quantities, you want to um, go, go through a known good serv- server that is whitelisted and does not end up in, in spam. So the way to go here is use a, an email service provider. There are all those well-known ones like Amazon SES or MailJet. And, and there's a list of pre-configured uh, providers in Mordic. You can just choose yours or uh, choose uh, the, the other SMTP option and, and use any provider of your, your choice. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's another option that's called SendMail Delivery. 
That means that Mordic hands the email to the underlying server system and let it do the job. So maybe there, there are existing delivery rules for that system. Maybe it's a good one. Um, and then you can go with this or it's, it's going to forward it anyway, whatever. There are, play, uh, there are situations where that makes sense to, lay, to hand it to the underlying system. Sometimes it's solely for security reasons even. Now the other um, question is uh, what email domain do you use? And that's a really tr tricky one because if your main domain or your company domain is uh, xyz.net, um, then you could of course send emails by that domain. So I'm sending from info at xyz.com or net or eki at xyz.net. <laughs> and yeah. that's okay. Um, the only thing you need is you need to uh, allow Mordic to send from that name, either by sending from the server and <laughs> configuring, it, configuring it to all the anti-spam tech uh, settings, or by delivering, delivering it to your central email system uh, and let that system do the actual end-user delivery. So you can do that. You can even use Gmail for that. And it's it's a common um, way to go, except that email has some, some quantity uh, limits. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's a good way to go. And oh, yeah. you can also use the email inbox system from Gmail that way. So you have your standard email domain. You can send use that for sending. You can use that for uh, receiving. On the other hand, now, if you use Eki at xyz.net, and that's my regular email account, probably you don't want all my email, or at least I wouldn't want all my email <laughs> in Mordic. So Understandable. So, <laughs> yeah, solution there is, is use an, an alias name, like, like Eki.g or whatever. <laughs> um, as an alias and uh, um, and let Mordic retrieve all only that through some certain tricks. Good. Th then the other way to go is have a, a different domain, typically a subdomain like m.xyz.net um, and uh, have a specific or its own delivery f through whatever means. That could then be an external system or it could also be your main system and have separate inboxes for that as well. So in reality, most people tend to use a subdomain solution. It could even be a completely different domain, but um, that doesn't work as well with recipients. Um, so normally it's a trade-off. You need to figure out whether it's easy to use your main system, whether it's capable of doing that whether there are organizational or other issues. And uh, if, if it's a, a way to go, then it might be the easiest one. Uh, but most people end up with, with a subdomain. Yep. Okay, now we have a domain to send from. We, we have the uh, delivery. We talked about the inboxes. Uh, so how do I receive emails? Um, if, if you go with, is with your own subdomain, then you should make sure that your email delivery service can also provide inbox in the first place. There are some that do, there are some that don't. So there may be other ways to receive emails. You, s you absolutely want to be able to receive your emails and not just send them. So make sure you have a solution for that. And um, in the end, it ties into the question, which is a go good email provider? So for sending emails, the most important one is, is obviously the delivery rate. If, um, if there's an email service that ends up in spam sometimes, and the other one is better at that, then that's probably the, the most important parameter to look at. On the other hand, it's really hard to tell from the outside which one is best. There are no. comparisons. Uh, the major one, the mainstream ones are or, or pretty good these days, what you really want to do is have your own dedicated IP address to make sure it doesn't get accidentally burned by some parallel user of that IP address. So if you look at the 
at the plan of the email service provider, um, choose your own dedicated email address. The other thing for us here in the EU is, is uh, the, the aspect of, is it okay of using a, a non-EU email service provider? Or would I rather opt for, uh, for a European one? Then um, the costs, obviously, there's the, the issue of um, high, high volume, how, how expensive does it get? In general, it, it, it is not an expensive business in the first place, but still, if you look at large, large numbers, you want to look at the cost as well. Yep. And as I said, is there an inbox option or do I have to take care of that separately? And is that an issue for me? Good. Last up, um, because that's a, a frequent uh, point of, of struggling, uh, I would like to talk about anti-spam specifically. Mm, spam is, is annoying and uh, people try to put things in place to avoid spam. And um, in order to that, we need to make sure that we use all the technology that proves we are uh, legally using this email domain and we're not just spammers and, and app using a, a, a third party email domain. And there are basically two means for that. One is the so-called uh, Center Policy Framework, SPF. That is um, yeah, just, just a, D a DNS directory entry, where in the internet name directory, um, your email server needs to be listed for your domain. So regardless if it's your Mordic server that's sending or it is uh, Amazon, you need to make sure that in your own directory, that server or that list of servers is then included in the SPF record. And you can find the syntax for that in the, in the knowledge base article and also probably with your email service provider. The other one that's a little bit more complex is called domain key identification, uh, DKIM. Um, that's a public-private key encrypt or um, s a signature thing. Basically, every outbound email gets signed by you or by, by your server with a private key. And in the public directory, there is a verification key that allows everybody in the world to verify that signature and say, okay, this email is really coming from the person that they're claiming to be, or the, the organization rather. So um, if you want to do that, you need to m make sure that the public key is publicly <laughs> known. <laughs> and you need to make sure that the signature is added to the outbound email. And that is something that you, for instance, cannot do if you use PHP delivery. Because Mordic doesn't ca care about that, it just delivers the email regardless. If you want to add the DKIM signature, you either need to set up your send mail delivery or your local delivery to do that, that's possible, or you use an external email provider and they all can handle DKIM and you can add the necessary data or, or key to some nice looking UI. Yeah, that's uh, um, anti-spam and that's uh, email. <laughs> it's a yeah. long list of, of <laughs> separate things, but as I said, it's, it's so often that it comes up in the forums or with customers that I thought it makes sense to give an overview here and to write it all down in one comprehensive knowledge base article. Yeah. Good. Uh, I'd like to add to this um, a little item from, from our feature wish li list in the forum that mm -hmm. is called reply detection for more than one inbox. And I'll link to it in the show notes like I linked to everything else. Yeah. Um, the point there is that Mordic does not have the ability to monitor more than one inbox for responses. And if you uh, figure the situation where you send any sort of email to your customers, and it's not all coming from the same email address, but from typically from the owner of the contact. That's a setting you, setting you can do in Emotic to, to make sure that the email is coming from the owner 
or sales rep or whatever. Um, and th when the, the recipient then replies to that email, it can go to the sales rep, that's fine. But if you want to, uh, to receive it in, email, uh, in, in Mautic, and if you want Mautic to react to it, to the fact that, that that user has responded and maybe specifically responded to this sales rep, then um, there's no easy way to do that. There are some, some tricks to get in that direction, but uh, the perfect way would be, in my mind, uh, would be to have every Mautic user uh, configure his own uh, or her own uh, email account or to have some, some, some central way to do that, but rather, and uh, so they can all receive their own replies in Mautic and have it handle it. And there's more to it, like, like okay, do we want to forward to the general email system, etc. But mostly we want e uh, Mautic to be able to handle it within campaigns and segments, etc. Yeah. Yeah. So if you like it, if you ran across that problem before, then go to the forums and vote for it. Okay, a little update on uh, last day's topic uh, about where's DB and then the who's the project lead of Mordic. Um, and the update is, uh, I don't have an update. So <laughs> it's not like, like nothing happened, but there's nothing final yet. And as you can imagine, it's, uh, it's a tricky thing to negotiate all, all the details. And so I, I can promise you we're really very actively working on this one and we'll have a nice solution i think um in, in a couple of days maybe we'll have something when this podcast airs but now we're re recording this on on monday the 11th we don't have anything final yet so please hold the line good another bit of update is uh yeah more more like a shout out to our friend rodrigo, rodrigo dimitra um, yeah. who we talked to in, in a recent podcast about uh, Mautic in Brazil. Mm. And uh, the good news is that he and his, his power tech company is now back to doing a regular podcast in, in Portuguese. Uh, and if you're able to understand Portuguese, by all means, go and check it out. <laughs> uh, link in the show notes. I also got a small little update uh, concerning the Google Season of Dogs. So we as Mortic applied for the Google Season of Dogs and the goal of it is to bring technical writers to open source projects and to improve uh, the documentation of those open source projects. And we applied for our developer documentation, the end user documentation and our knowledge base and hopefully uh, we get accepted into the program and then we will get um, the support of professional technical writers and we will have a better documentation at the end of it. But sadly we are not sure yet if we got into it. Um, we will know that at 12 UTC today, so when this episode is live we should know whether we got accepted or we did not. And I really hope um, we get into it and get uh, the support of professional technical writers so we can improve our documentation and just uh, have that for our community. Yep. <laughs> That's uh, so funny because we're recording this really on Monday morning and uh, you can tell that Leon is really excited about it and <laughs> I can't wait to, to get the result, but it is only be going to be published in uh, poo, like three hours from now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I wish you luck because uh, documentation is obviously part of your education team, and um, so it's yeah. all yours. That's why uh, I'm excited. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. But um, but out of curiosity, how, how does it really work? Is it really like like uh, Google is is giving us a tech writer, or is it like like in the summer of code that that we offer the project and then tech writers can apply for that project and Google just just pays the, them or, or what is it like? It's pretty much similar to uh, the Google season of Summer of Code. Summer of Code, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like the word. Um, so um, technical writers apply for um, at this Summer of uh, Docs 
and then when they get accepted they can choose a, um, a project so we as okay. like an open source organization we offer our project and we write like uh, we need support on developer documentation or end user documentation and those technical writers if they think a pro a project is interesting they uh, may choose us to support us and over a period of three months they will uh, support us and guide us in our documentation and help us improve our documentation and i think google financially supports those technical mm. writers for this period of time Okay, so so given that that we are accepted, which we will, we will only know in a couple of minutes, um, <laughs> that means that that any, any technical writer in the world could apply. But the typical scenario, if it's like summer of code, is that somebody who is already ne near Mautic would be able to say, "Okay, I'd like to like to spend the next three months on doing hardcore documentation for Mautic, and that's so great, and and that's so helpful for Mautic, and Google will yeah. pay me." Yes. Just okay. perfect. Cool. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. Let's move on to uh, Shopify. Here comes Alex. Okay. Hey, Alex. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Aki. Nice having me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't it? How's life in Cyprus? <laughs> um, it's it's really great, actually. Um, I guess the last month uh, have been way nicer than in Germany or Austria. So I'm initially from Vienna and um, yeah, my family told me that it was really, really cold and really, really hard to spend the lockdown there. So uh, look at Northern it was a little Germany. bit nicer here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, um, for those who don't know you, um, if you look at the link, LinkedIn profile, uh, you see, see the word automation specialist. Um, mm -hmm. So what, what exactly do you mean by that? Or, or how, how rather, how, how broad is that uh, description? And also, how did you get there? Yes. Um, yeah, first of all, um, I studied architecture and I worked as an architect um, more than, so all in all, like 10 years. And... Um, so I come from an plan from a planning background, and in architecture you try to um, take a top-down view on your projects. So it's not like most businesses are running like work in progress and they get bigger and bigger and bigger and do um, patchwork actually um, as soon as they need stuff. And we are helping um, these companies, which are big enough to get in trouble because of the patchwork. Mm. <laughs> so Some call it agile. we try to... Hmm? Some call it agile. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yeah, we try to um, uh, create top-down plans for existing companies who um, are doing most of their work manually instead of automated and that's the reason automation specialist and um yeah that's i switched from architecture a few years ago um when i had a burnout and my wife had a burnout as well and she was an architect as well so we said okay let's stop this life and change it and then we changed um to write code for 3d drawing applications And um, suddenly we decided, no, let's do something totally different. And then we went into um, creating online courses with our knowledge of doing 3D models and stuff. And then we started exploring how to market our courses. So that's the, the, that was the trigger to get into... Um, web design and website creation and uh, online marketing, basically. And so, yeah, through this, we learned how to market our own stuff. And then um, we built many, many websites and web shops and helped e-commerce companies or helped companies to create their web shops and um, plenty of... Um, um, of 
consulting businesses to uh, promote and sell their uh, stuff. And so we figured out someday that it could be actually the thing to to get back to architecture, but in the online business world. And yeah, then we came up with the idea to automate what's automizable, <laughs> basically. Oh, what a journey. Man. And, and then yeah. um, you already mentioned that, that uh, beyond your general online marketing background that you created over the years, you went into not only automation, but, but a specialization in, in e-commerce. And mm -hmm. uh, so what, what is finally very visible in the Mordic world is that you are working on a Shopify adapter. And I, I wanted to take the chance to talk about that uh, specifically with you today. So what, what gave you the idea for creating that adapter for Shopify specifically? Okay, so um, we found that many businesses who use WordCommerce or at least these who we worked with are a little bit greedy in terms of investing money into their business, especially into their uh, online um, uh, business. And so we uh, took, a uh, took a step further to see what else is there and where are people who are really willing to invest into their business and so we found shopify because in shopify it's basically necessary to invest from the beginning because shopify is a quite expensive platform actually to run uh, at least compared to a self-hosted woocommerce store <laughs> and um, then we said okay these are actually real um, potential customers for creating a um, software as a service Uh, with Mautic. So there are a few um, integrations, marketing integrations at, on the market um, to this day for Shopify, directly built in in Shopify, but actually none of them are really good. And I'm, re I'm, I'm such a big fan of Mautic. So I decided, okay, let's go there. And then here in Cyprus, there are many um, online entrepreneurs and coders and so on. So we found somebody who had the same idea and he is very good at coding and he proposed to us to partner up and get the thing going. So yeah, that was like five months ago. And so we digged in deeper and deeper and finally the alpha version is almost there. So Yeah. So did, did that's you? The, that's the. Did, sorry, did, did you already make public who that person is? Um, no, we didn't. Okay, fair <laughs> Not enough. Not yet. Okay, good. Not yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's still he. He was asking us for um, um, for donating the brand. So we we have this brand Hartmut IO and. Uh, he asked us, he liked the idea and he liked the, the logo and everything. So he asked us to, to take it with, to, to, to create this product within this brand. So that's what we, what we did. And we are doing the marketing part and he's doing the developing part and side by side with our own in-house uh, developers. So, yeah. Cool. Nice, mo nice that's model. That's the... Yeah. And then, uh, that's the thing at the moment. Tell us a little bit what yeah. will that integration look like? What features do you already have, etc.? And mm -hmm. on the other hand, what do I have to do on either end to get the thing going? So how how does how does the integration work? Do you need plugins or or? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, it's um, it's fully integrated in Shopify, so it's going to be within the Shopify marketplace. So it's not at the moment, because yeah, at the moment it's not um, a plugin which you can um, which you can purchase and install on your running Mautic system at the moment, because it's, we were um, looking for a possible um, For a, for a valuable product 
And at our research, we came up with that that it's that it's better to create a fully integrated plug um, integrate um, not integration a fully integrated um, Maltic service within your um, Shopify store or directly linked to your Shopify store because Shopify users are non-tax usually. Mm -hmm. And um, it's more likely that people are willing to pay us or this service if they don't have to uh, mess around with any line of code or like any kind of logging in somewhere else and integrating like funnels and emails and stuff. So we decided to build an app. So basically we built an app which is running on our server and this app does does the whole working. <laughs> so it does basically the synchronization between the Shopify store and the uh, Mautic instances. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you decide inside your Shopify, you can you have the marketplace in Shopify, and there you can um, um, purchase, or there you will be uh, able to purchase the, the integration, and then you launch your plan, and you get a button directly in your store where you can log in into your Mautic. And you don't have any login credentials. It all comes from the shop directly. And uh, in the background, the app creates your own instance on our servers and launches um, your Mautic, which is then automatically um, connected to your Shopify store and synchronizes your clients, your um, products, and also creates abandoned cart funnels and upsell and cross sale funnels for you. So that's the that's the biggest benefit actually. We have built in uh, templates inside of Mautic and they um, work directly with your existing clients and products. So you can use the whole beauty of Mautic basically and email um, for the beginning mm -hmm. um, for your Shopify store to to drive sales okay. so, so, so the or idea, to drive marketing. Yeah, sorry. So the, the idea is is not uh, for people who already have Mordic to now be able to connect their Shopify to the system. Mm -hmm. It's rather for Shopify users to get access to really powerful marketing automation including existing exactly. campaign templates, emails, whatever. Exactly. Okay, yeah. Um, so that's for the beginning. Mm -hmm. But but we are very we are aware of the of the community and we are um, looking or listening what what the people are demanding or what the people are wishing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if we see that the demand is big enough to create a plugin then we will do so but for the beginning and especially for the alpha and beta um, phase we need to gather uh, data of how the system works and how our own servers behave and how it behaves with huge um, 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 page load mm. and synchronization load so um, that's the most important data we need at the moment. Yeah. And that's, and, and therefore it's better to integrate directly with existing multi, uh, with existing Shopify stores, uh, which are running uh, already. And also the beta is going to be open for, um, only for people who are running functioning, um, business making <laughs> Shopify stores. So it doesn't make sense for us to um, give out the beta because the beta is going to be for free for a few months. Mm -hmm. And um, it doesn't really make sense to give it out to a newbie who yeah. has like 10 clients and doesn't bring in some data. Sure. So the, the beta would be uh, free access to your 
most it's service would you consider it a SaaS service mm -hmm. software as a service yes totally yes it's a SaaS. Yeah. yes did mm -hmm. you ever consider uh cooperating with other more access providers like, like retailers uh, you, yeah not yet because we are basically a or we became a retailer over the last year mm -hmm. <laughs> um like we we actually never planned this <laughs> But um, we have a marketing automation agency and we work with so many clients. And for all of them, we are setting up Mautic. And then we decided someday, instead of setting it up on their servers and having to mess around with different setups and different, um, uh, like different um, um, processes and so on and so forth, we just decided to create our own our own software as a service again, and so we are hosting for them as well. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I'm curious to see how that goes. Um, so what you already mentioned you are somewhere close to the beta. What you or I not mentioned before is that you are building this on top of Mordic three, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that, yes. Yeah, that's that's really cool. So it's one of the really first. Um, integrations or, or plugins directly for Mordic 3 and one of the benefits of Mordic 3 to, to the world as, I mean, as mm -hmm. soon as people can, can get the plugin. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, but Everybody is waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. yeah but, but it makes a lot of sense to, to go this way. That's cool. How did the development process go? If you can, can speak to it, maybe, maybe you're not the person to ask, but, but um, was there any like, obstacles in terms of uh, API limitations or, or yes. roughness of Mordic 3 or whatever? Yes. Um, so the, the biggest obstacles were not on the Mordic side, actually, um, or are not on the Mordic side, actually. The biggest obstacles are basically API calls. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that was the most confusing thing at the, at the beginning. So, um, so yeah, we have a very small team, so I know a little bit of the, <laughs> of the developing process and what's going on there. And, um, the beginning was like, we, you are very limited doing API calls on the Shopify side and, uh, very limited means like only 200 calls per second. Mm. <laughs> and that can be extremely limiting in um, in bigger stores so it 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 totally it it doesn't make any problems as as long as you have like 100 products or something but if you have thousands of products and if you have thousands of clients who are shopping every day in your store and uh, then you need a lot of API calls and uh, the biggest obstacle was to combine um, a, a data and fetch it within one API call. Yeah, that was the that was actually the biggest obstacle. Mm -hmm. um, and and the second the second uh, biggest obstacle was to um, keep track of what you already fetched. And where you start fetching again on the next call. Okay, but that's so, really in, inside of, of the application logic itself. That uh, has nothing. Yes. With the Mordic or, or Shopify. On no. The end. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. But that's that's the thing what our app mm. has to do, mm -hmm. because otherwise the app just shuts down all the time. So in the beginning, it was just you start you start. Um, a new store or you you create your new connection and your new instance and <laughs> like two minutes later it was shut down <laughs> so cool. just because the just because the the calls are the, the server runs runs crazy yeah so yeah i guess you guys had had some fun there um you already yes. talked about um business model for for um paying for all the development um 
the, the notion of the Mordic marketplace, there has been some discussion in the last couple of months of, of ways to go and options. Mm -hmm. I, I, I guess it's multiple months down the road before we can really touch things there. But but uh, do you do do you have any thoughts there? Is there any like do you need a subscription model for this or what? Would, if if there was a Mordic, Mordic marketplace, who would it make it easy for you to really uh, get money for uh, for your development? What do you have any thoughts on what, what requirements you would have mm -hmm. or see? Mm -hmm. um, actually, I would not reinvent the wheel, <laughs> um, and uh, there is a a small website software out there which does it really smart and and so in my in my opinion and that's wordpress <laughs> yeah 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 we're referring <laughs> <And> to that <laughs> okay so you like yes. the model they go right <laughs> yes um and this model is so is so um so commonly used mm. that we were planning actually in 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 the freemium in the freemium world mm. so we do Or we did all of our projects in the freemium world except our own um, um, hosting for bigger businesses. Yeah. But but I think it's very smart to give away a a trial or like a small um, a portion of what you do mm -hmm. and charge for the stuff where you know okay as soon as people need these functions then they are making money so that's really cool in Mautic. you you know or basically you can say as soon as people send 10,000 emails um, they are going to make money if not why are they sending so many emails <laughs> i mean there is then they are really making some mistakes so um, that's that's the thing what i think is is a very good way to go and I would love to see the marketplace go there, actually. Yeah. Because Perfectly. things like our app could be a great thing for, for people who just want to try out what possibilities are there. I mean, Shopify is not the only very good <laughs> um, um, e-commerce um, software. So I think it's good to, to have the opportunity or the possibility to try and find your best fit. So... And I think the freemium model does exactly this. Let's go there. Very good. Okay. Uh, yeah, but you, you already touched on, on some some general insights in, in uh, e-commerce, best practice, etc. I'm, I'm curious, uh, among your customers, is there a lot of B2B as well, or is it just B2C? Um, our customers, that, that's only B2B. It's so only B2B. We, okay. Yes, I mean... We are, I mean, it depends what you say is B2B and what is B2C in the marketing uh, sphere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as a, um, as a company who makes marketing automations for um, other companies or for other businesses, it's actually called B2B. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> Because, I mean, there are, there are, of course, we have small companies, we have coaches um, who are, um, whom we are building funnels for. Mm. And we have small businesses like um, language schools who we build their funnels and their automation for online courses and so on. So uh, that's, the, that's the one thing, but that's all B2B. And the other thing is we build bigger online stores and automate what's possible. And many things of this automation process is um, running through Mautic. So, yeah, but these are like, yeah, 1,000 product shops and more. Wow. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, it, it's definitely a big difference whether you, you sell shoes or spare parts of machines or, or services. Totally. Um, so, in, in my mind, Even the funnel looks looks different, but yes. um, as long as, as we're, I mean, obviously capable, <laughs> capable, it's what we are with Mordic. And when you look at your 
stock templates that you're going to provide with the Sh Shopify adapter. There are, over time, there, there is going to be a collection and, and one, one fits this and, and one fits that better, I, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Okay, fascinating stuff. Um, where can people learn more about, well, maybe about you or maybe about your company's service offerings? Where would people go if they would like to participate as a in, in the beta if they have a a mature Shopify um, system that they would like to connect to automation? Where, where where can people find you? Yes. So first of all, our website, obviously, and the website is hartmut.io. That's the like the German name Hartmut. And um, I don't know, maybe you show it in the show notes or I can spell it. <laughs> no, I, I put it in the show notes anyway, but I'm curious where, where okay, that name comes from. Whenever I read it, I think <laughs> there must be some funny background. Yes, actually, we, we, my wife and I, we created this company and we, um, we had a really hard time before that. And then we said, okay, we only want to do things where we are going to laugh really hard <laughs> when when we are talking about our project and then we came up with this idea and to call the project hot mood because we just found it funny and then we were laughing the whole afternoon and then we just said okay it's settled yeah <laughs> That's i'm the, not sure the, the, everybody else out there who's not german language can share the humor <laughs> but, but be assured it is a funny name <laughs> yes it is And even and even here in Cyprus, we have many people who really like like the name, and and we have a chameleon. That's the that's the he is hard mode actually, oh, and boy. the chameleon <laughs> is is yeah. is our I don't know it's called in English mascot the the mascot exactly, and yeah okay so it's, it's quite hard, funny hard, hard so. mode io and uh, yes hard mode io. Yeah. And on the on the website you find um, Hartmut.io slash Shopify integration. There is um, the landing page for the Shopify integration where we have set up a, a sign up list for the beta. Mm -hmm. um, so for beta testing, and so we will get in touch with everybody who signs up there and talk with the people directly. What are they wishing for and um, how we can make the best fit for them and for us in this beta um, phase. So okay. that's, the, that's the thing there. And also on the website, um, everybody finds stuff about us. We have a, um, a German-speaking YouTube channel, which we are creating at the moment. And it's also linked on the website. It's everything about Mautic. So we decided to step away from wordpress and really get all in into the multic sphere so yeah awesome good stuff that's the that's the thing there yeah. <laughs> and also we are we are um blogging right now really hard <laughs> or we try to to bring out more stuff I mean, there are some really good blogs in the Mautic sphere, mm -hmm. but it's it's very technical. And we just found that especially our clients have many um, questions which need to get um, answered. And so we we took on this um, and yeah, this 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 challenge and started our blog. It's also there. So mm. And it's uh, dual language, so it's German and English. So yeah, very cool. I think it's it's worth a read, probably. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> excellent, excellent, yes. good stuff. Thank you so much, Alex. Please say hello Thank to you your wife well. for me. I will. Um, I'm very curious to see the Shopify integration in action one of these days. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when Mordic 3 has landed. <laughs> yes, that's the. That's the latest. I mean, we, we want to make beta tests a little bit before, but <laughs> we will see. <laughs> Very good. Okay, thank you so much for your time and all the insights. And um, yeah, I, I'm sure we'll see and hear more from you. And I'm looking forward to that. 
Thanks, Alex. Nice. Thank you very much. Thank again. You. Bye -bye. It was a, a pleasure. Thanks. Bye. Um, yeah, thanks, Alex, for those insights. And I super much appreciate that he's put in the work into getting the Shopify uh, plugin for Molec 3 and that he released the beta now. And coming on like new updates, you got some new insights on the Multicon. Um, yeah, it's 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 not a secret. It, it is in, in, in Slack and in the forums. But we did a voting voting on the date. I think we talked about it in the last morning cast, no? Yeah, um, I think so. And the result of the voting was that uh, um, there is a close <laughs> competition between the two dates, but but the winner is November third. So yeah. on third of November, twenty twenty, we will have our first virtual Morticon. Um, yeah, finally. we are now starting the the uh, preparations in in detail. That that is basically set up the core team, and at the same time um, see who is willing to help peripherally, peripherally, whatever the word is, uh, <laughs> um, because the core team, of course, with what they and we will have to do is identify the items, what needs to be done, and. Uh, make sure to to pull together a team to get all that done so if somebody is for instance would like to help with the technical infrastructure or with the logo and, and uh, design um, then that's that's perfect but there also has to be a little team that uh, coordinates all that and and, and uh, identifies uh, identifies a need for work and and finds the right people for all that so um, I'll link to a call for participation, and if you are interested in either, in either, and either uh, being part of the core team or helping in in specific areas, that is highly appreciated. And please uh, let me know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we're now in May, so November is half a year to go, but uh, <laughs> it's gonna fly, I promise. <laughs> oh, it will. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and and uh, just like this podcast <laughs> did fly once again <laughs> and uh, is now approaching its end, but I don't want to go without reminding you of uh, please, please spread the word and um, link people to the podcast and um, give use social media, but also have. use the direct word of mouth and uh, let people know. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thanks Thank for joining the show. Uh, th and thanks, Leon, for your time. Yeah, and, thanks, thank uh, you for your time. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll talk again in a couple of days and weeks. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye.